Movie monsters are as important a part of fiction as any actor. Really, a good monster is psychological fear made flesh, representative of very literal personal demons and real-life skeletons in the closet. But films so often do a disservice and give them easy weaknesses, so we're left with a satisfying conclusion and a dumbass villain. Well, I say no more. Let's get real with these fictitious creatures and be honest about their deadly capabilities. I am the unrelenting Ash from What Culture, and these are eight movie monsters that would be unstoppable in reality. 8. Gremlins Gremlins You'd be forgiven for thinking that Gizmo, the original Mogwai, was a cute little fella. But he's actually a Pandora's box of death and destruction that in reality would most likely bring about the end of days with a simple accident of getting him a bit wet. Good, great pet for kids, this. I mean, really, when you get down to it, what constitutes as wet? Behave. Is damp enough to trigger the mogwai or steam? Surely there's moisture in most food and they need to eat. Truthfully, it doesn't even matter though, as within a week of introducing one of these things into a society with irresponsible pet owners, there would be countless uncontrollable hordes of them to deal with. And how do you stop a million mogwais from eating after midnight? You don't, and a million gremlins spells destruction and death with their dastardly ways. If these creatures ever existed in reality, anyone that survives the Grempocalypse would be part of a roving band of human survivors living in a ruined world home to malevolent gremlins, with daylight as the only reprieve. I Am Legend's origin story is really just a gremlin takeover. 7. The Parasite – Slither the parasite that infects Grant in Slither is a small and unassuming thing. It has the ability to fully control its host and can also create further parasites that infect the population, allowing the parasite to control them all at once. Instead of zombies, think of them as one giant super zombie broken down into itty bitty pieces. Flashbacks explain that the previous hosts for the world-consuming parasite has been little more than galactic animals. But for the first time ever, this parasite would have had access to all of the intelligence, ingenuity and adaptability that the human mind is capable of. That it manages to be killed and takes down its hive mind makes sense as a physical creature, but that the remains are still infected afterwards and appealing to local wildlife means that it wouldn't be long for us to get royally f***ed again once it re-establishes itself with no known origin host and gets inside someone else's head. Really though, mind-controlling, world-destroying parasite plus human sentience and innovation is an equation for getting wiped out, before we even take the film's event into account. 6. Aliens – Independence Day The aliens from Independence Day have a simple deal. These guys are humanoid aliens, hell-bent on consuming Earth's resources before moving on to the next planet to continue the process. They're essentially an entire floating civilization aboard a mothership that spits out smaller, city-sized ships, who then consume everything in their path. Yet somehow, even though they're nomadic, they've managed to develop destructive and defensive technology far more advanced than that on Earth. Take a second here. Did you see the destructive power of those ships and the telepathic control they can throw over humans with? I'm not 100% buying that it'd be possible for us to create a virus that would interact with their technology and lower their shields, let alone infiltrate their ship to administer it from a frickin' Macintosh laptop. Only in movie land could a scheme like that and Randy Quaid save the day. In reality, we'd have been completely overthrown and destroyed, our resources harvested, and our bodies experimented upon and probed in all sorts of weird and uncomfortable ways. But I guess that scene ended up on the cutting room floor. 5. The Machines – Matrix Series If machines ever gain sentience, then that would be it for us, as the Matrix so kindly points out. Yet still we build them, and still we advance towards the inevitable future where every home has a robot helper, and every factory a robot workforce. Has sci-fi taught us nothing? In The Matrix, these machines were on a mission to harvest humanity as a power source, imprisoning us in said Matrix to keep our brains active. And they're doing a pretty good job before the one comes along to act as the prophesized fly in the ointment. The scary thing about The Matrix is that its premise isn't exactly outside of the realms of possibility. If the robots were to ever gain sentience and assume control of the planet, there is no way we could compensate for the processing power and intelligence they'd be able to synthesize against our puny human brains. And the worst thing is, we'd have no internet to even try to learn how to fight back with. What are we gonna do without a YouTube tutorial? Our only hope would be that one of them infects the machine city mainframe by getting a virus from a dodgy torrent. 4. Freddy Krueger – A Nightmare on Elm Street series 
One of the most iconic 80s monsters, Freddy Krueger as a concept is admittedly a little far-fetched. He's a child killer who was burned alive by the families of the children he hurt. It was never that simple in the 80s though. Fire alone can't kill that much fucked up. And soon Freddy continues his rampage against the children of Elm Street, only this time in their nightmares. Over the years, he's been defeated in increasingly silly ways, from not believing in him to dousing him with holy water. But reality would be a different kettle of fish. The problem with the Freddy franchise is that to make the movies work, that to figure out a way to defeat him, which got a little more unbelievable each time. If you faced a malevolent murderer in your nightmare that had the ability to end your life for reals, where the hell would you even begin to fight back? You can't launch a criminal inquiry in someone else's subconscious imagination either. So in reality, I would wager Freddy would be free to do whatever he wanted, whenever he wanted, to whomever he wanted until eventually he got bored. Which could be… never. Even when he's killed in films, he always makes his way back, further reinforcing this point. And if that doesn't sit well with you, then the evil entity of New Nightmare could be even more unstoppable to boot. Not even the power of Meta could kill that one. 3. The Predators – Predator Series The Predators are an alien species that, above all else, value the hunt. They pack a serious wallop and employ all manner of gruesome gadgetry to take down their targets. In the original Predator movie, a single Predator managed to dispatch almost an entire squad of elite commandos without so much as breaking a sweat. In Predator 2, another lone Predator is able to wreak havoc on LA, the concrete jungle, almost unabated until Harrigan eventually catches up to it. And that's just one. As we know, there are more. Many, many more. The Predators have been using our planet as a hunting ground for centuries. Can you imagine if they suddenly went batshit crazy and launched an all-out hunt against us en masse? Not only can they become effectively invisible, they're also extremely cunning, possess advanced weaponry, and are extremely difficult to take down even in an unfair fight. Not only that, but an invasion of predators would likely be a slow, deliberate process that we wouldn't even realize was happening until it was far too late. 2. The T-1000 – Terminator 2 – Judgment Day the Terminator series was lamenting the future of robotics way before the Matrix tried its hand. In T2 Judgment Day, the sentient machines continue their mission of sending Terminators back in time to assassinate John Connor before he can become a problem for them. The T-1000 is more than just a robot. He's an amorphous, shape-shifting blob of liquid metal, who can't be killed or even damaged with conventional weapons. Oh, and he can assume the identity of anyone he sees, too. Meaning that if there's ever someone on screen that you're not quite sure of, it is probably brown trousers time. The T-1000 is stopped in Terminator 2 when he is dumped unceremoniously into a vat of molten metal. There, he can't reconstitute and therefore can't pose much of a threat to anyone. But John Connor was lucky, and another version of The Chosen One. Had it not been for the convenient location of that steel mill, you would have never managed to get the T-1000 anywhere near a pool of molten metal, let alone to take a bath in it. The best humanity as a whole could really hope for is a quick and painless death. 1. Xenomorphs – Alien Series The Xenomorphs are not so much a monster as they are an unrelenting force of death and destruction. An army of assailants whose only bred purpose is to kill that which may pose a threat to their queen. Of course, they also propagate their own species, which unfortunately requires the life of a host. That means that each one of us that falls victim is another number for the enemy ranks. Aliens allowed you to witness what just a small group of xenomorphs can do to an entire, heavily populated colony, and a unit of highly trained colonial marines to boot. If xenomorphs did exist, and they ever shared a planet with Homo sapiens, we'd be no way as comfortable as we currently are at the top of the food chain. A single alien could lay waste to an entire village in about an hour. Two or three could cause untold trouble in a city, and a small group, left unchecked on Earth, could easily consume our planet in no time at all. The most solid method of killing an alien is to boot it out an airlock, which you can't do in this here atmosphere. When will the Wayland yutani Corporation ever learn? 